Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Judy Garland and John Hodiak in The Clock. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A popular magazine now on the stands describes New York as one city in America where dreams come true, where the fabulous and the improbable are ever present. An example is a clipping which I have here dated January 19th. It reports that as a result of seeing Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's screen success, The Clock, scores of servicemen are riding up and down escalators in the Pennsylvania station looking for romance. The reason they give is, that's how a soldier met Goody, Judy Garland in the picture. In tonight's Lux Radio version of The Clock, we show you how it happens. As we bring you Judy Garland playing her original screen role, co-starred with John Hodiak. The clock is the tender story of a boy and girl who meet in the heart of a teeming and relentless city. I'd like to tell you another boy and girl story that ended as all such stories should. In a small village in France some months ago, a young French couple invited troops of our occupation forces to be present at their wedding. The man who told me this story said he felt that he should bring a gift, and he could think of nothing better than two cakes of luck soap for the bride and groom. As he describes it, their gratitude and appreciation were as great as if he'd brought them jewels. He adds, I thought they'd never stop thanking me. Well, an American bride might not consider Lux soap such a rare and costly gift, but I'm sure she'd understand the enthusiasm and appreciation of her less fortunate sisters overseas. It's time now for the first act of The Clock, starring Judy Garland as Alice and John Hodiak as Joe. Department of Overwhelming Statistics. Subject, New York City. There are five boroughs in New York. Population, 7,454,995. So many people. Too many people, you might say. Almost too many people. The above population lives in an area of 299.0 square miles. No place for a strange in New York. Not too big. And everybody hurrying. Just rush, rush, rush. Trains and ferries, buses and taxi cabs, subways and L's. Who are they all? What are they doing? What do they want? It's Sunday morning, a spring morning, and in New York's Pennsylvania station, a young soldier gazes in awe at the swirling, bumping crowds that mill about him. Oh, uh, uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, could you tell me how to get out of this place? Yeah, I just use that escalator, Corporal. Oh, oh, well, where does that take you? 7th Avenue, in from camp, huh? That's right. Well, you'll like it here. Oh, uh, well, what are some of the things to see? What do you think would be good on a Sunday? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I work here, but I live in Jersey. First time in 11 years I've been here on Sunday. You'll find plenty to keep you busy. Goodbye. Oh, thanks. Oh, say, work. Oh! Oh! I guess I didn't look where I was going. No, I guess you didn't. Well, you're going up, soldier, or aren't you? Young man, would you mind if I use the escalator? Oh, I, I, I beg your pardon. Hey, mister, soldier, my heel, my heel. Who, who, me? No, no, behind you, my heel. Well, I'll be right up. Wait for me. What's the matter with your foot? You sprained your ankle? No, hey, look, you want to stay off that foot. If you twisted it, I'll see. Here, I better, I better take a look at it. Hey, the heel's off your shoe. Yes, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll go down and find it for you. What, in that crowd? Oh, I'll find it. Uh, what was it, just a little heel? Well, yes, but, but it's all oh, right. Oh, no, 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 no. I... I'll find it all right. I'll be right back. How does your shoe feel now? You sure he fixed it all right? Well, it's fine. I never thought a shoe repair shop would be open on Sunday. Well, I go that way. Thank you for carrying my bag. Oh, that's all right. Oh, uh, uh, do you mind if I go a little way with you, sort of look around? Well, n no, not if you want to. Oh, thank you. 
Uh, I get a bus on Fifth Avenue. A bus, huh? Oh. What's the matter? Well, uh, the buildings. I've never seen buildings like that in my life. And wherever you look. <laughs> if I'm going to catch my bus, maybe oh, I'd better... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, let's go. I guess I've got a nerve, all right, getting on the bus with you. Well, that's one way of seeing the city. But this is the first time I ever rode on a double-decker bus. Sure nice in the open like this. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Too breezy up here? Oh, no, no. Hey, there goes your handkerchief. <laughs> this is certainly my day to lose things. Here, mine. Thank you. Oh. This city must seem very strange to you. I'm green as grass. I suppose you've lived here all your life. No, just three years. Folks here? No. Um, that's Radio City up ahead. You mean you live all alone? No. I... Look, there's St. Patrick's Cathedral. Uh, you're not married, are you? No, I live with another girl. Oh. Well, well what do you do? If you don't mind my asking. I'm a secretary. Oh, I see. What kind of an office do you work in? Just an office. I guess I'm pretty nosy. Yes, you are. I'm sorry. Well, it really doesn't matter. You're so nice. You're not catching cold. Oh, no, no. It's the sun. It, it always does that to me. I, I always sneeze exactly twice, and then I'm all through. <laughs> oh. Here, here's your handkerchief. Well, hadn't you better keep it? No, no, no. I'm all finished. Uh, say... Don't you think you'd better get off soon? Well, I didn't have anywhere to go, but if I'd bother you... Oh, no, no, of course. I, I didn't mean that. You don't bother me. You <laughs> sure? Well, certainly. I I just meant that this bus only goes as far as the park. And... They got a park here? With trees and grass? Yes, I think you'd enjoy it. There, there's a lake and, and a children's well, zoo. You, you wouldn't care to walk just a little with me in the park, would you? No, that's out of the question. I've got to get home. You see, I've been in the country, and I... Uh, 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 where, where is it? Here. <laughs> Thank you. Gesundheit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I never get tired of watching the seals. They're such comedians. Did you ever think how much some animals remind you of people? <laughs> yes, I know exactly what you mean. You take that seal there. I've got an ant in Minnesota looks just like that. They used to tell me I look exactly like an owl. <laughs> an owl? Oh, that's ridiculous. No. You don't look... You do. You look exactly like, you look exactly <laughs> like an owl. <laughs> what is it you remind me of? Never mind. I don't want to know. Hey, look at that. What? Kid with a sailboat. Kids are a great study when you get to know them. Yeah. Hiya, Skipper. Well, mister. Let's see. Three masts, huh? Say, will you look Get at it? Get your big nets off of my boat. Oh, Ooh, yes, thank you are. I don't get it. Kids usually like me. Oh, what a rude little boy. They hardly ever kick me in the shins. I don't understand. Well, Joe, I, I've really got to get home. Oh, yeah. Well, goodbye, Alice. Goodbye. Uh, what, what, what are you going to do? Oh, I, I don't know. Over there, that's 79th Street, huh? Mm-hmm. The, the museum's over there. Yeah. Well, it's an idea. I've only been there once or twice myself. It's, it's a shame. I, I ought to go there more often. Really? Museum, huh? <laughs> well, I'll show you where it is. I've got time for that, I suppose. Come on. <laughs> Of the period 1411, 1375 B.C., or during the 18th dynasty, you will notice there's... We could go out and see the paintings, here. Joe. How are your feet doing? Well, I know they've been walking. Let's just let you guys here for a while. All right. Oh, look. There's Rodin's thinker. Yeah, I've been thinking, too. What? How lucky I am. Oh. Well... I, I was <laughs> also thinking I could never get used to this city. No, nah, this isn't what I want. What do you want? A little business of my own out home in Mapleton. Why? Well, because it's my home. 
Not that I don't want to get around and see things, but I get to thinking sometimes, like in the spring and the evenings. I can almost smell the grass outside the house. Dad used to mow the lawn before dinner. He'd never let us kids do it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a dog? Dog? No. Did you? No. Why'd you ask that? Well, I, I, I just wanted to... <laughs> no, I didn't have a dog. After the war, I'm going to be a builder. You mean a contractor? Well, more like a carpenter. I want to put up houses myself. Well, they say that houses are all going to be alike, made out of plastics and things. Oh, not in Mapleton, they won't. Oh, why do you want to be a contractor, Joe, or a carpenter? Oh, I like working with wood, I guess. I like the feel of it and building things with my own hands. You know what I mean? Yes, I do, I think. Oh, is that the closing bell? What time is it? Uh, five o'clock. Five o'clock? Oh, I've simply got to go. I guess everybody does if they're closing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you can sure learn a lot in a museum. <laughs> well, here's the bus stop. It's been a nice afternoon. I, uh, I suppose you're probably busy tonight. Oh, yes, I am. Well, thanks a lot for being so nice. Uh, uh, like a cigarette? No, thank you. Oh, you're a lighter. Huh? Well, that's one of those things that lights anywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it has a shield to keep the flame from blowing out, see? Mm-hmm. Uh, would you like it? Oh, no, you keep it. Oh, take it. Well, I really wouldn't have any use for it. Well, I just wanted you to have it. Oh. Thank you very much. Well, here comes my bus. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, maybe, maybe we'll meet again sometime. Maybe. 79th Street. Uh, we're out of here. We're now goodbye. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> and, and, and thanks for the lighter. Oh, that's all right. Well, let's go, lady. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Alice. Goodbye. 82nd, fares, please. Hey, hey, Alice. Alice. I think the soldier's calling to you, young woman. What? Uh, I'm sorry. What? Alice, you, what? Alice, Alice, will He's you... He's running see? after the bus. Something's wrong. Oh, no, I don't think so. Joe! Alice, will you break that date tonight? <laughs> yes. Where will I meet you? Ah, uh, I don't know. What? Uh, uh, under the clock. What clock? Under the clock at the Astor Hotel. Where? Under the clock at the Astor at 7. What? Under the clock at the Astor at 7. <laughs> oh, thanks, Alice. <laughs> My gosh, Alice, where have you been? I'm a little late, I guess. Freddy's called up every ten minutes. He says you have a date with him. Yes, I have. Well, I've got to get going. I'm supposed to meet Bill. Have a good time. Al, what happened to you? Well, nothing. I, I met a soldier. Oh, Al, you're not trying to tell me you got picked up by a uniform. Picked up? Really, Helen? What's that you've got? That's a cigarette lighter. Where'd you get it? He gave it to me. <laughs> what else happened? Nothing. Well, I guess it's all right as long as you got rid of him. Well, I didn't exactly get rid of him. What? I got a date with him tonight. Oh, good grief, Al. You don't even know the man. Well, as far as he's concerned, this is just a pickup. Helen, I wish you wouldn't keep saying that. Joe's a nice boy. He's just lonesome, that's all. Mm-hmm. So it's Joe already. Joe what? Joe, you don't even know. Oh, look, Al. I don't want to butt in, but it just doesn't make sense to pick up as... to make friends with a stray soldier. I know they're all swell kids, but a girl has got to look out for herself. You going to use this pin tonight? Uh, no, here, get more. Thanks. It's different when you meet a serviceman through friends and you know who he is. Listen, you've never done anything like this before, and I won't let you do it now. I just won't let you do it. He'll be waiting. He's going to be awfully disappointed. Oh, honey, he won't feel half as bad as you feel after his leave is over and he goes back to camp. I suppose you're right. I am right. Anyway, Freddie will be phoning. Oh, Freddie. Well, at least you know his last name. Remember what I said, Al? I'll remember. 
Good night, Helen. Good night. Hello? Oh, hello, Freddy. Yes, Helen told me you'd called. Well, I'm almost ready now. Yeah, a half hour will be fine. Yes, Freddy. Oh, uh, excuse me. Yes? Is, hey, is there any other clock here except this one? Meeting somebody? Yeah. Well, this is the clock, all right. This is where everybody meets. Well, maybe it's a little fast, huh? Uh, let me see. No, right on the nose. Exactly 20 and a half minutes after 7. Oh. Well, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, there you are, my lady. Oh, Alice, oh, no, oh, you... Oh, hiya, darling. Say, oh, you excuse look me. cute. Oh, here. Oh, a gardenia. Darling, it's lovely. Oh, your hair. Here, hold my hair. There, how's this? That's fine. Now, how do you like it? Oh, swell. Well, let's go, honey. Uh, I'd like a gardenia, please. Yes, sir. Put it in a box? No, paper will be fine. Be careful of the pen. That'll be one dollar. Oh, uh, do you happen to have the right time? That clock in the lobby's always right. See? It's a quarter of eight. Oh, yeah. You're late, huh? Well, don't worry, Corporal. The gardenia will do the trick. Yeah, well... Oh, uh, your money. Here. Thanks a lot. Terribly sorry. Some some people called just as oh, I was. Oh no like no they... no no! You're not late. I was just just worried about you. Uh, oh here, here's something for your hair. Oh Joe. Want me to hold your mirror for you? Yes, please. How'd you know I like gardenia? <laughs> just took a chance. Uh, am I holding the mirror right? Yes. Now, just a second. Uh, there. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, let's go, Alice. <laughs> glad you picked this restaurant. Well, I just took a chance. I've never been here before either. Uh, Alice, you started to tell me about Helen. Oh, well, I was just going to say we work in the same office. Uh, she's in the sales division. Bill says she's practically an executive. Who's Bill? Oh, he's a friend of Alice. Sometimes Freddie and I go out with him. Uh -huh. You like it, don't you? The city and the office and everything. I love it. I've never wanted any different. Never? Mm -mm. Don't you want to get married someday, maybe? Oh, that. Well, not for a long time, anyway. Well, what about this uh, Freddy that you mentioned? Freddy? Mm-hmm. What about him? Well, what about him? Well, does that suit Freddy? I don't know what you mean. Well, I mean not getting married. I don't think I care to answer that. Oh, well, <laughs> I was only asking. My goodness, I hardly know you. I don't have to answer anybody's questions about Freddy or anybody well, else. Well, now, wait a minute. Now, this Freddy doesn't mean anything to me one way or the other. Well, all right, then. Let's leave him out well, of it. Well, I was only asking. I don't know why you had to bring him up at all. Look, you brought him up. I never even heard of the guy. I think maybe I'd better go. What are you doing? Well, you're a coach. You've got ice cream all over it. Oh. Helen was right. She told me what would happen. Well, look, I, I, I'm sorry if I said anything. If I had any sense, I'd have listened to her. It's different when you meet a serviceman through friends and know who he is. Then you know who he is, only... Sometimes when a girl dates with a soldier, she isn't only thinking of herself. She knows he's far away from home and alone, no one to talk to, and... What are you staring at? You've got brown eyes. Oh, look, I... I want to... I think that... Well, let's go somewhere else.
Funny, isn't it? Here we are in the park again. Except it's night. And it's a different park. Uh, oh. That's a river down there. Been talking so much, I hardly noticed. And look. So many stars. Yeah. But that's only a few of them. I know. It's all you ever see. Just a little part where you are. Well, they're the ones we know up there. Vega, Orion, Big Dipper. Well, I, I, I never knew their names. And all the people in this city, all around us, all the people in the country, and all the people in the world, out of all that, just those stars, the Big Dipper and, and what you said, and you and I down here in this park together. It's strange, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't seem strange anymore. Suppose we hadn't met. We couldn't not have met. I know. It's strange, though. My coming home from the country early. That was only a little part of it. Your being there in the station. Well, that was part of it, too. There were other things, like... your leaving home. My getting leave just when I did. That's all part of it. Oh, even those ships in the river. Ships? They're part of a convoy. That's why I got this leave. Guess it'll be the last one I'll get. Oh, I, I see. It's a lot of things, isn't it? Some don't matter and others do. They all matter. This night, being together. Yes. They matter, don't they? I don't know. Alice? Joe, oh, I don't know. quiet here. Almost as quiet as it is at home. It's never quiet, really. The city's full of sounds. Always underneath. Listen. In just a minute, we'll bring you the second act of The Clock, starring Judy Garland and John Hodiak. Meanwhile, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins. Watch the news story tonight, Libby. Well, I'll give you a lead, Mr. Keeley. Gable's back and Garson's got him. Oh, Libby, you're talking about metro golden Mayor's new picture, Adventure, starring Greer Garson and Clark Gable. Mm-hmm, you guessed it. That's just what I meant when I said Gable's, Gable's back, back and, and Garson's, Garson's got him. Could be Greer's red gold hair and her lovely smooth complexion. Could be. There's a reason why nine out of ten screen stars use Lux toilet soap, Mr. Kennedy. Adventure's a very exciting picture. Did you see the preview? Uh, no, not yet, though I was there when they were filming some of the scenes. My, what an enormous place that Metro Golden Mayor is. A city in itself. Mm hmm. I visited some of the stars' dressing rooms while I was there. You mean you actually went into the dressing rooms of those famous beauties, Libby? A lot of women would envy you that experience. Oh, yes, Mr. Kennedy. I imagine they'd be interested to see how luxurious and well appointed those dressing rooms are. And there was one luxury, Libby, I'll bet you saw everywhere. Now, whatever could you mean by that, Mr. Kennedy? Well, I won't keep you in suspense. I can report that every single dressing room had Lux toilet soap in it. Must be something about that soap, Libby, when the loveliest women in the world depend on it for daily beauty care. Screen stars tell me active lather facials are wonderfully effective. They're quick and easy, too. Just cover your face with the creamy Lux soap lather and work it well in. Rinse with warm water... 
splash on cold, and pat dry with a soft towel. That's all there is to it. And this gentle daily care does make skin lovelier. Recent tests by skin specialists proved it. Actually, three out of four complexions improved in a short time. And, Mr. Kennedy, w- women might like to know that in uh, these days of... Sh- women would like to know this in these days of shortage. Lux toilet soap is thrifty to use. Each cake lasts and lasts. If you aren't acquainted with this famous beauty soap, why not get some tomorrow? Let Lux Toilet Soap give your skin gentle, protecting care it ought to have. And now, Mr. Keeley returns to the microphone. We continue with Act Two of The Clock, starring Judy Garland as Alice and John Hodiak as Joe. Only a few moments have passed since Alice and Joe walked slowly and silently out of the park to Alice's bus stop. But in those few moments, midnight has come and gone. And so has Alice's bus. Well, we can take a taxi cab, Alice. That would be awfully expensive. Oh, that's all right. Here comes one now. Hey, a uh, taxi! That's not a taxi. It isn't? No, it's a milk truck. Oh. <laughs> Well, we thought you were a taxi. Uh, going to lift, plenty of room. Got a radio, too. Hear it? Well, that's awfully nice of you. Come on, hop in, hop in. Sure we're not crowded? Ah, plenty of room. You going home from somewhere? Yes, from somewhere. Oh, that's good. I'm just starting out. And here's our next request number, this time from Miss Nellie Green. Nellie Green, that name again. Nellie is the premier masseuse that's French for rubber at Schrager's All Night Turkey Bath. Discrimination, then. I'll get a load of what she wants and now. And Nellie's request <laughs> is sweet and lovely. Eh, that's her second request this week. I had a request in now for three months. Do I get it? No. Miss Nellie Green? Yeah. <laughs> What's your request? That's how I need you. You know it? Uh-huh. I like the roses need the fragrance. I like a sweetheart needs a kiss. I like the summer needs the na-na. Say, you ever seen them load the wagons? The milk wagon? Oh, it's a very interesting sight if you've never seen it. Well, well that's awfully nice, but I, I think I'd better get home. Where do you live? On the east side. Well, I could take it right back up there. Well, uh, honestly, Mr. Henry. Uh, Al Henry, you get the ride, I get the comfort. Well, what do you think, Joe? Well, I sort of like it here. Well, the way they load up the trucks, that's something very few people know about. All they care about is where is the milk when they open the I certainly enjoyed watching them load the trucks, Al. Sure. I knew you'd enjoy it. Uh, are we going uptown now? Yes, ma'am. Hey, uh, turn up the radio, huh? I bring you a request for whispering time. Six girls in a pool room. Okay, girls, come out of that corner pocket. Not please. mine again. Whispering. <laughs> well, maybe they played it while you weren't listening. <laughs> oh, what's that? Flat pie, I'll bet. I'll take a look. Have you got a spare? Nah. That's nah, a flat, all right. Oh... I gotta find a phone. Service call, come right out and fix it. Well, there's a lunch wagon across the street. Well, that'll do. Let's go. Right over at the service well, We ordered you a cup of coffee. Oh, that's well, nice, thanks. thanks. And there's a radio, you won't, you won't even miss the program, listen. The oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A whole country going to the dogs. A whole country... Hey, you. Huh? Put down that coffee a minute. What's the matter? You just made an unkind remark about dogs. Who said anything about dogs? Yeah, what's the matter with dogs? Yeah, wait a minute. Well, I hope, hope, oh, how do you do? A pleasure to meet a member of the armed forces. But this civilian, this un-American, the most un-American conduct bully me since Bunker Hill, the Constitution of the United States for a Bill of Rights. Now, wait a minute. I never said nothing about it. request for That's How I Need You. What was that, pal? Right down, will you? That's my number. And the request is from my old pal, Al Henry, the man with a million milk bottles. My request? Oh, your request. Well, I got a request, too. This country has got to expand. You hear me? Expand! Expand! Al! Oh, now look what you've done. Well, well, what did I do? Well, you threw your arms out like this and you socked them right in the eye. Al, are you hurt? Oh, pal, speak to me. Forgive me, will you, pal? 
you rest, Al. You can tell us where the milk goes and Joe and I'll deliver it. Oh, no. I couldn't do nothing like that. Well, we'll see how you feel when we get uptown. Caught me right in the wind. It's the eye, too. You got a beaut. Oh, boy. Sure feels like it. And I missed my song. I missed the whole number. What do I do, Alice? Stay on the same street? Uh-huh. Gosh, I'm tired. How's Al doing back there? He's so asleep. You know what he said? He said you and I were natural-born milkmen. <laughs> That's because we brought back the empties when we deliver the milk. Look, it's getting light, Joe. Mm -hmm. It's almost morning. Yeah. Back home, I used to see the dawn come up sometimes. Me too. Up over the Indiana fields. The morning comes here first, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Before that, it's out at sea. Before that, it's... Joe. Hmm? Where are they sending you, do you know? No. England, I guess. It's a long ways away. Alice. Hmm? Do you like me a little bit? <laughs> oh. Oh, Joe, I'm sorry. I... I'm so sleepy. Why don't you doze off, then? I'll find a way, okay? Really? Sure. <laughs> Good night, Joe. Good night, baby. Now, practically cold, like I tell you, they deliver me whole route and bring me home. I think that's about the nicest thing I ever heard. Well, I guess we'll be going along. Going along? Well, breakfast is all ready. Oh, no, really. We, we Never could. tasted cooking like Mama's in all your life. Why, she can mix you up the finest glass of ice water you ever drunk. Now, <laughs> 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 decide. She makes the best corn cakes you ever had. Now, come on, sit down. They're all ready, too. Watch yourself now. They're hot. Say, you folks married? Oh... Uh, no. Well, lots of young folks are getting married these days. A butter one of these while it's hot, Al. Thanks. Ow, oh, hot is right. Well, I think you you have to know somebody a, a long time before you get married. I mean, you, you don't want to do something as serious as that in a minute. Well, me, I think you can find out as much about somebody in a minute as you can in a whole lifetime. You know what she was doing when I first seen her? No, Al. No, no, what? <laughs> Cooking butter cakes in child's window. Oh, no, really? <laughs> and the minute I seen her, I knew she was for me. Well, I don't know, though. I don't think it's fair to the girl, a soldier, getting married. Well, how does he know what condition he'll come back in? Well, Joe, if people ever thought about all the things that could happen, they'd never do anything. Well, I think if a girl and a boy want to get married, all the talk in the world ain't going to stop them. Never has yet. And if... if Al! What's the matter? Get away from the muffin. Company first. Well, look, they got some, ain't they? Just exactly <laughs> like his uncle. Oh, those Henry. It isn't me uncle. It's me cousin, Michael Henry. He's a clerk of the court for Judge Forbes. Well, your uncle, your cousin, what difference does it make? <laughs> it's me cousin is the one that can eat. Well, I never saw such eating. And I never saw such a place in my life as this, just trying to get something to eat. All oh, right, here, take some up and take it. All right, I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> How do you like the subway, Joe? Oh, it's sure it's different, all right. They go so fast. Is that what you've been thinking about the last five minutes? Well, no, I was thinking about Al Henry and his wife. Oh, they're lovely people. I was thinking about what he said. About how it really doesn't matter how long a person knows another person. No, I, I guess it doesn't matter so much. What have you been thinking about? Something you said. About a soldier not marrying because he doesn't know what condition he'll come back in. Oh. Well, I, I think if two people are really in love, that, that wouldn't make any difference. Wouldn't it? Of course, I... Oh. 
Joe. Joe, I, I, I don't want to leave you today. Alice, could... could... could what, what, what about your office? Well, I, I... I suppose I could find some excuse. What? Oh, oh that, that, that'll be wonderful. Hey, come on, Alice. Joe, hurry this way. We, we have to change trains. Boy, this mob, even worse than Penn Station. <laughs> You're not half as confused as I was my first time in the subway. Well, I'll just hang on to you. What were you saying about the office? Well, well it won't take long, and, and you can just wait outside. Oh, that's swell. <laughs> well, here comes our train. Red Central train to Let them off, please. Let them off. All right, step lively, everybody. All the way in. Joe, come on. Uh, step lively, everybody. All the way in. I'm coming, Alice. Wait inside there. Uh, All the way Joe. in, folks. Step lively. Watch your step. Let's go. All the way Alice. in. That's all. Watch the door now. That's wait, wait, all. Wait, I gotta get on there. Oh, you know. Next train, buddy. I gotta get on there. Stand back, buddy. Please, can you tell me what the next station is, mister? No English, no English. Uh, lady, uh, could you tell me what the next station is? The next station? Now, let me see. Uh, this is Grand Central, and I'm sure the next station would be... No, no, it couldn't be that. Now, if this is Grand Central, I'm... Next station? Sure, bud. 14th Street. 14th Street. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> Mister, hey, mister. Yeah? I've been looking all over for a girl. Did, did you see a girl get off the train a little while ago? I've seen a thousand girls get off, fella. Well, is this the next stop after Grand Central? The next express stop, yeah. You mean there's something else? Sure, the local after Grand Central. The local stops at 33rd. How do I get there? Take the stairway at the end of the platform and go across. Stairway end of platform. I've got to find her. I've got to find her. <laughs> tell you something about this city of New York. Any of you been here before? No, I haven't. Well, it's a big place, boys. Population 7,454,995. Oh, people live in an area of 299.0 square miles. I beg your pardon. Yes, ma'am? Is there someone in charge I could see, please? Oh, uh, there's a receptionist, miss, over there. Thank you. I... I'm looking for a soldier... I thought maybe he'd come here to the USO. Any particular soldier? My friend. We got separated in the subway. I've been looking all over for him. What's his name? Joe. Joe what? I don't know. That's a big help. Or is this a joke? Oh, no, please. I... We, we only just met yesterday, and I don't know. It didn't seem to make any difference what his name was. Oh, it didn't make any difference. I, I know it sounds funny, but but the night went by so fast, and I got sleepy. And then we lost each other this morning, and he's only got today. I don't see how I can help you, young lady, and I don't think I'd go around telling that story. Either. Oh, you don't understand. I've got to find him. I... What am I... What am I going to do? We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, we'll bring you the third act of The Clock, starring Judy Garland and John Hodiak. How many of you would ever think that the job of chaperone would lead to a screen career? It did, though, in the case of our young guest of the evening, Miss Ruth Brady. Tell us how it happened, Miss Brady. Well, I had my own radio show in Louisville at the time, Mr. Keeley, commenting on fashions and beauty. The bathing beauty pageant in Atlantic City was about to begin, and I was elected to escort the girl chosen as Miss Kentucky. Mm, that would be an interesting assignment. It proved to be for me, because in Atlantic City, I was offered a singing and dancing engagement with a New York, with a New York nightclub. 
And that led to a role in a Broadway musical. And from Broadway, it wasn't far to Hollywood, I take it. No, Mr. Keeley. A Metro-Golden-Mayer talent scout saw me and signed me to my present contract. And since then, you've appeared in a number of pictures. Mm Mm-hmm. Arthur Freed gave me a part in The Clock. Lux Radio Theater's play tonight. And more recently, George Sidney directed me in my latest part in MGM's new musical, The Harvey Girls. As one of the Harvey Harvey waiters, as I suppose. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I pushed my way through the crowds the other night to see The Harvey Girls. John, I'd say that Ruth here would be mighty photogenic. Well, rather, with that ash blonde hair and... My Lux complexion, Mr. Kennedy. Thanks for the compliment. You're right. I've been using Lux toilet soap for a long time. Remember, I used to give beauty advice on my radio show, and I believe in practicing what I preach. Well, whenever you advise women to use Lux toilet soap, you're getting giving them a real Hollywood beauty tip. Nine out of ten screen stars depend on daily active lather facials. I know they do. And I know why Lux Toilet Soap is a mighty effective complexion care. Thank you, Miss Brady. Famous screen stars, lovely Hollywood starlets agree. Only the finest ingredients go into this satin-smooth white soap. Here's how any woman can prove for herself what Lux Toilet Soap can do to make her skin lovelier. Get a cake of Hollywood's own beauty soap tomorrow. Now, Mr. Keeley returns to the microphone. Here's Act Three of The Clock, starring Judy Garland as Alice and John Hodiak as Joe. In the bewildering puzzle of city streets, swirling with a flood of alien faces, Joe and Alice have searched hopelessly for each other, their hearts gripped with a realization, terrible and absurd, that they will never meet again. Not knowing where else to turn, Joe wearily makes his way to the Pennsylvania station. Uh, Can I get train information here? Uh, What do you want to know, son? Next train for Aberdeen, Maryland. Aberdeen? Mm, 147. Going back to camp? That's right. Track 14. Thank you. Help you, lady. Excuse me, please. I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. Oh, uh, officer, uh, would you tell me how I can get to... Alice! Huh? Where'd you want to go? Alice! Well, now, how do you like Alice! that? Alice! Alice! Joe! Oh, Joe! Alice! Joe, I thought, I thought you were lost. I didn't know where to look. Quick, quick, what's your name? Mayberry, Joe. Mayberry, Mayberry. Uh, I didn't know where to find you. I didn't think I'd ever find you. Mayberry, oh, oh, look, Alice, we can't wait. We mustn't. It, it wouldn't be right. Oh. Joe, are you sure? Don't you see? We might never have found one another again. No, 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 don't say that. I've got to say it. Look. Please, please, will you marry me? Oh, yes, Joe, yes. Jackson and Smith, Southwich and Grady, please... Gosh, I didn't think a marriage license bureau would be this busy, did you? I guess all we can do is sit here and wait our turn. We have so little time. Why don't they hurry? Got your blood test papers? Everybody got your blood test papers? What's that, Joe? What? I don't know. Oh, uh, mister? Yes? Mister, what's that about blood test papers? According to law, applicants for a marriage license must have blood test certificates. We didn't know anything. Where do we get one? Uh, 67 Whitehall Street. Tell him Mr. Swartz sent you. Be quiet, please, quiet. Two subway stops downtown. All right, Irving, who's next? Well, how long are you open here? Until four o'clock. We'll have to hurry, Joe. I, I can find it. Everybody got your blood test papers? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Where do you think you're going? Well, we're looking for the blood test department. Got a pass? Well, no, we were told this was a place You to can't come. go upstairs without a pass. Well, what do we get a pass? Lieutenant Droffel, second floor. But you can't go up without a pass. Take a seat over there. Who does he think he is, Hitler? I wish he was just once. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, you two getting married? Yes. Oh, well, why don't you say so? Here. Use this pass. Well, Room 318. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Well, you get fixed up all right? No. What's the matter? They're too busy. We couldn't get the papers till tomorrow. We had to get them by 4 o'clock this afternoon. Well, why don't you go to a private laboratory? What do you mean? Well, you can go to one of the approved labs and get the results in an hour or so. I got a list somewhere. Oh, please, please hurry. Yeah, yeah, here's one. The L and N Public Health Service Laboratory, 631 Canal Street. 631 Canal. Th- thank you, thank you very much. Window 7, Silvers and Skillman. Alan and Mayberry. Alan and Mayberry. Well, we're Alan and Mayberry. Here we are. Here we are. Our blood test papers? Well, here, right here. I just have to stamp it. 
Here you are. Silvers and Skillman. Joe. Look. Look what she stamped on it. Not valid for 72 hours. Not valid for 72 hours. There's just one thing you can do, a judge, if the Supreme Court may issue a waiver of the time clause. A little quiet, if you please, permitting the parties to be married at once. Supreme Court judge. We can try, Joe, we can try. A waiver? Oh, but you're too late, folks. Too late? Yeah, I'm sorry, but the judge has just left. Oh, no. Well, I- I- excuse me, but... This name on the desk, are you Michael Henry? Yeah. Well, then you're Al Henry's cousin. He told us about you. Well, why didn't you tell me? Say, maybe I can catch the judge after all. Oh, uh, how is Al? Uh, he's fine. Him? Uh, she's fine, too. Oh, oh, that's fine. Say, don't you think you better hurry? Oh, I will. Uh, just make yourselves comfortable. Joe, Joe, look what time it is. Oh, we tried so hard, so hard. Schwartz, wait a minute, Mr. Schwartz. Elevator going down. Yes? Oh, we, we got the waiver, and here's our license, so can't we get married? Oh, you're the young couple who was... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They told us your office was closed. Going down. Well, I got through a little early. Just have time to cast the 4.30. Oh, Sorry. please, it isn't 4 o'clock Make yet. Make up your mind, Mr. Schwartz. Oh, well, come along. You, you can marry us, can't you? Oh, yes. We even have a little chapel, potted plants, and a few ferns. Oh, that, that's nice. Irving! Yes, Mr. Schwartz? Uh, look me up another train, and it's not 4 o'clock yet. Bernie! Oh, Bernie! Uh, turn the vacuum cleaner off. Don't you see there's a wedding? What do you think this is, a factory? No. Yeah. And stand back. Oh, stand back there. Now, let's see, young man. Yes? The young lady should be on the left. Oh, yes. Uh, stay here, Bernie. We'll need a witness. Sure enough. Uh, now, your certificate, please. This is a serious and solemn step you hereby undertake. Do uh, either of you know of any reason why you both should not be legally joined in marriage? Uh, then do you, uh, Joseph Allen, take this woman as your lawful wedded wife? Do you promise to love her? Well, say I do. No, I, I, I do. Train out there, I couldn't hear. Do you, Alice Mayberry, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? Do you promise to love, honor, comfort, and cherish him for better or for worse? I, I do. Place the ring upon the bride's finger. I haven't got a ring. Under the law, it isn't necessary to have a ring. Oh, I didn't know. The floors can be waxed later, please. For as you both have consented to wedlock, I do by virtue of the authority vested in me by the laws of the state of New York now pronounce you husband and wife. And may God bless your union. Here's your certificate. Thank you. Oh, boss, there's a 440 train. That Sunday stupid looked up weekdays. Oh, good luck, Mr. and Mrs. Allen. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck, lady and mister. Thank you. Thanks. I didn't have any flowers. No. Well, we didn't have time. Well, we rushed so. Well, I... I guess they want to finish cleaning up in here. Well, we made it, Joe. It's just four o'clock. This sure isn't much of a honeymoon, just sitting in the park. Uh, are your mother and father living? Uh Uh-huh. Are yours? Oh, yes. Yes, they're living. Do you suppose I should write your folks, maybe? I suppose so. I I suppose I should write to yours. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Oh, oh, would you like to see our house? I have a snapshot in my wallet. Here. Oh, that's nice. That's my mother. Oh, she'll like me? Oh, sure she will. I should say so. Joe, hmm? what time does your train go? Well, um, I don't have to be back in camp till tomorrow noon. Alice? What? I guess you're not very glad you married me, are you, Alice? I'm so sorry, Joe. I guess I just don't feel very married. I know. I don't blame you. Well, it, it, it wasn't your fault. It was just that... It, 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 it was so... I know. Ugly. I know. I, I, it wasn't... It didn't... I know. I, it's all right, darling. It's all right. <laughs> Do 
Feel better, darling? Yes, I'm all right now. I'm sorry, Joe. I've been looking across the street there. Somebody else just got married, too. Just came out of that church, see? Well, Joe, I'd like to go into the church. Joe, please. Oh, I want to go into the church, too. I don't think they'll mind. Nobody here, only us. Look, a prayer book. It's opened at the marriage service. Yes. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Which is an honorable estate. And therefore, is not by any to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in the fear of God. Wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife? Wilt thou love her, comfort her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her as long as ye both shall live? Take thee, Alice, to my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better and for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death to us part. Our Father who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. I will be done. Oh, Joe. I love you. I love you till the day I die. Was everything all right, sir? The dinner was satisfactory? Oh, everything was fine, fine. Thank you, sir. Dinner in our own room at the Waldorf Astoria. <laughs> Guess I can afford it for one night. Only a half a night. Darling, it's, it's after midnight. Yeah, I know. I've got an hour to get to the station. Oh. Alice, how can I say it? How can I tell you everything I want to tell you? How much I love you? I want to think about you every, every minute, every day. How I'll... Alice. Alice, try, will you? Will you try not to worry about anything? Joe, when... darling. You're coming back. You want me to tell you how I know? Two days ago, when you came to this city, you didn't know anyone. You didn't know me, and I didn't know you. And now we're married. And we both know that that was meant to be. So don't you see, who, whoever makes the arrangements for people is doing pretty well for us. That's all we need to know. Down this way, darling. Don't, don't join me my way around. Oh, you can't send me your laundry. Oh, Ma, don't worry about those things. I'm in the Navy. Are you sure you got everything straight now, honey? Oh, I won't forget, sir. Now, remember the insurance of the car runs out next month. Well, that's something we don't have to worry about yet. Hello, soldier. What are you doing? Well, hi, Skipper. Oh, I'm just going away. I like you. Well, thanks. I like you, too. <laughs> See, honey? Those are kids like me. They hardly ever kick me in the chin. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, just once in a while, darling. This is it, you know. Yeah, my ticket, please. Show your ticket, please. Goodbye, darling. Take good care of yourself. Don't forget to write. No, no, I won't. I love you. See you soon. See you soon. We leave Joe and Alice with the hope that they'll be together soon and bring them back together now as they are in real life. 
one of Hollywood's happiest combinations, Judy Garland and John Hodiak. Judy, there's only one thing that we missed tonight, your singing. Oh, well, I've always wanted to play a straight dramatic role, Mr. Keeley. And the clock said it was time, eh? <laughs> the clock brought Judy more than fame as a dramatic actress. It brought her famous husband, too. Yes, I've known Vincent and Ellie for some years. You should be very proud of him. Well, Vincent and I have known each other for a long time, too. You directed two other pictures I appeared in. Well, Judy, you and Vincent have earned all the happiness that's coming to you. Oh, thank you. Incidentally, Mr. Keeley, didn't you meet your wife, Miss Tobin, the same way? Mm, somewhat. I directed Genevieve in the very first picture that I made in Hollywood. <clears throat> I'm going to get myself a wife. It looks as if I'd have to turn director. <laughs> All you have to do is turn your head, John, with all your fans. Besides, we need you on the screen, John. You and Judy were great together in the Harvey Girls, and I'm willing to predict that that picture will be well at the top of next year's popularity polls. Well, I think we're all proud that Judy was voted one of America's foremost screen stars in the polls for 1945. Naturally, we're especially proud of that since Judy is a Lux girl. Oh, indeed I am, Mr. Keeley. I always have been. That's wonders for my complexion. I've known so many screen stars who use it. Well, we have one of those screen stars on our show next Monday night. Oh, what are you presenting, Bill? Next Monday night is lovely Rita Hayworth, co-starred with Charles Corbin in his first appearance on this stage. They bring us universal, fascinating drama, this love of ours. The deeply moving story of a man and wife who lose each other through misunderstanding and are brought together by a child's love. Sounds right up to the usual standard, Mr. Keeley. Thanks, Judy. And before we say goodnight, I think our audience would like to hear some news for which we are humbly grateful. That the Lux Radio Theater has again been voted the best dramatic program of the year by Radio Daily Poll of radio editors from coast to coast. Congratulations. And good night. Good night. Good night. You gave us a delightful hour with a clock. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Telescope. Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Rita Hayworth and Charles Corbin in This Love of Ours. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. You may be wondering why your favorite Lux toilet soap is often hard to get these days. The reason for this is the serious shortage of industrial fats and oils. Our domestic production of these oils since the end of the war does not begin to make up for the amount we used to import from the Pacific. That's why it's important to keep on saving your used kitchen fats. Save every drop and turn them into your butcher. It will pay you four cents for every pound. American women did a superb job of fat salvage during the war, and now your government urges you to continue to save and turn in used fats. Remember, with every pound you turn in, you help to prevent a really serious shortage of soap. In response to President Truman's invitation, leading Hollywood stars are on their way to Washington to participate in the climax of the March of Dimes collection. In this drive for the relief of infantile paralysis, the motion picture industry last year collected some $6 million through its studio personnel, its many theaters, and the gratuitous personal appearances of screen stars. Said the president at that time, my sincere personal congratulations and appreciation for a success beyond all expectations. If you haven't yet contributed to the March of Dimes, join this fight on infantile paralysis tomorrow. This program is broadcast to our men and women overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear This Love of Ours with Rita Hayworth and Charles Corbin.